With the hinge focus warm up, we're gonna be focusing on hips and lower back since we're gonna be doing lots of hinging. So stand up nice and tall. It's just gonna be a few minutes just to prepare the joints. So we're gonna start off with hip circles. We're going big circles in one direction. Take as long as you need for any of these. So if a few minutes is not long enough, if you need to warm up a little bit longer, that's fine. But we will be incorporating a primer after this to again, focus on preparing the joints, preparing the musculature. Other direction. And stand up nice and tall. We're gonna pivot and rotate. <clears throat> Fairly controlled, not excessively fast, but definitely not uh, too slow. And stand up nice and tall. We're gonna do posterior tilts, forward and back. Posterior, anterior. So we're just focusing on that pelvic tilt. And we'll go side to side. So lift up one hip, drive your leg into the ground, back and forth. Try not to lean side to side. And stand nice and tall. We're gonna shift our weight to one side, shift to the other side, back and forth. And we want to flex at the spine all the way down. Bend your knees, pull your shoulders back. Pull your shoulders back. Stand up nice and tall, arms out. Alternating back and forth, shoulder corkscrews. Probably one of my favorite movements. You'll see it multiple times this week. Just a great way to get that internal external rotation of the shoulder. And go ahead and bounce, shake it out, shake out every joint. Create a lot of tension, tension through your entire body. Hold, don't hold your breath. One more time, shake it out. It's a great way to incorporate into your workout as well when you're trying to recover. And you're good to go. Three-point hinge. Starting from a tall position, you're gonna hinge back, pulling your shoulders back engaging that posterior, trying to keep your shins vertical. You're gonna come back to standing with that posterior tilt, and then you're gonna go into a 45 degree direction, so that way we're gonna get a little bit more of that lateral line, so that medial glute. Then we're gonna come to the other side, so it'll loosen up the lower back, loosen up the hips, get you ready for the loaded movements. Rock and roll. So on the rock and roll, you're gonna start on your back. You're gonna kind of ball yourself up, try to get a little bit of spinal flexion. So that way we're gonna roll back and forth. So it's gonna help uh, release some of that musculature around the spine and just again, prepare you for some of the loaded work. So the idea is to go just through your lower up to your mid, uh, mid back. Then as you get better at this, you can go a little bit higher, still not putting any pressure on your cervical spine, uh, but try to come all the way up into a seated position. Chest supported good mornings. With a chest support good morning, you wanna make sure you're pulling that bell into your chest, but technically we're gonna go a little bit lower. So it's gonna be just underneath your sternum. From here, keeping that upper body engaged, you're gonna drive your hips back, similar to what you do uh, for a position of a swing. So you wanna focus on a nice 
rooted foundation to the ground. As you drive your hips back, feel that stretch through the hamstrings, through your glutes, uh, assuming you're not hyper flexible while maintaining a vertical position with your shoulders. So make sure your shoulders are above your hips. So even when you get into that bottom of the hinge, shoulders above hips. Three point hinge. Rock and roll. Chest supporting good mornings. Three point hinge. Rock and roll. Chest supporting good mornings.
single rep swing. So what this does is this helps you focus in on that initial position. That starting position is such an integral part of the movement. Most people just kind of pick up the bell and start going for it. But that setup, we wanna make sure that we are strong, we're rooted to the ground. We have that foundation, not only through the ground, but through our hips, through our entire lumbopelvic hip area, and our shoulders. We wanna make sure we set our shoulders, we engage our lats to keep that thoracic extension to avoid rounding. So we have to create that momentum every single rep. So we can't just fall into you know, the gravity, <laughs> gravity doing the work, going into that downswing. So swings are still gonna be very important, but this particular movement is gonna allow us to create more intensity on lighter loads and focus that power each and every time. Side plank left. With the side plank, you're going to focus on keeping your body strong and rigid. Make sure that you have that connection through your shoulders with your lats engaged so you don't sink into the pressure of your weight. Side plank. With the side plank, you're going to focus on keeping your body strong and rigid. Make sure that you have that connection through your shoulders with your lats engaged so you don't sink into the pressure of your weight. Single rep swing.
Side plank left. Side plank. Single rep swing. Side plank left. Side plank.
staggered single leg deadlift, left, we're gonna get into a staggered position. So imagine in that bilateral equal stance, all you're gonna do is slide one foot back so it's in line with the heel. Well, that way, what's gonna do is allow you to focus on that front leg, but it's gonna create a little bit of an off balanced position. So that's gonna require you to create that foundation to the ground, create that tension as you drive your hips back. So you don't wanna have 50-50 stance, think more like 70% of your weight or more is on your front leg and then your back leg is more as support to keep you balanced. Keep your shoulders engaged, lats engaged, so that you keep your shoulders back so you're not rounding forward and your shoulders stay above your hips. Staggered single leg deadlift, right side. We're gonna get into a staggered position. So imagine in that bilateral equal stance, all you're gonna do is slide one foot back so it's in line with the heel. Well, that way, what's gonna do is allow you to focus on that front leg, but it's gonna create a little bit of an off balanced position. So that's gonna require you to create that foundation to the ground, create that tension as you drive your hips back. So you don't wanna have 50-50 stance, Think more like 70% of your weight or more is on your front leg and then your back leg is more as support to keep you balanced. Keep your shoulders engaged, lats engaged, so that you keep your shoulders back so you're not rounding forward and your shoulders stay above your hips. Alternating bird dog. With the alternating bird dog, you're gonna get yourself into a quadruped position, knees under hips, wrists under shoulders. You're gonna elevate one leg while simultaneously elevating your opposite arm. So try to maintain a nice flat back as you increase that distance between your hand and your foot, trying to stretch that distance as much as possible by engaging the musculature of your glutes, of your lower back, and your shoulders. Staggered single leg deadlift, left.
Staggered single leg deadlift, right side. Alternating bird dog. Staggered single leg deadlift, left. Staggered single leg deadlift, right side.
Alternating bird dog. swing. Controlled sprawl. With a controlled sprawl, rather than just collapsing the ground, throwing your feet back, letting your hips sink, putting some pressure on your lower back, you're going to control each step of the movement from a full squat into your hands on the ground, engaging your shoulder, engaging your lats, driving your feet back one at a time, walking them back. So this is going to slow down the sprawl, slow down the burpee, but it's going to build that foundation that's going to allow you to get more ballistic later on. Swing. Controlled sprawl. Swing.
Controlled sprawl. All right, let's go ahead and decompress from today's workout. So drop your right hand down, pull your head gently to one side. And we'll go the other direction. Both hands down. And grab your hands back behind you, go into a wide position and bring your hands forward. Sit nice and tall. We're gonna reach for our feet, maintaining soft knees, so not locked out knees but don't bend, so as low as you can, just relax. And right knee on the ground. Bring that hand up and over as we drive that right glute, squeeze that glute. Extend that right knee, bring that left hand up. And down, switch knees, left knee on the ground. Bring that left hand up and over, squeeze that left glute. And on the ground, both. Bring that leg back, rotate. And down, and sit back onto your hips. Reach your hands forward. Walk your hands to your left. Walk your hands to your right. On your butt, bring your knees to one side into that 90-90 position. Drive your knee and your heel into the ground, hands on the ground, and you're just gonna drive your torso forward Now to the side, drive that knee, drive that foot. And push down. One more time forward. And to the side. Bring your feet the other direction. So knees to your left, drive your hip, drive your knee and your heel into the ground. Drive forward. And rotate. Drive forward. And rotate. Feet out in front. Reach for your toes or as far as you can comfortably. Keeping your toes pointing up, hamstrings and calves into the ground. 
and flip it over. Push your shoulders off the ground, keeping your hips to the ground as best you can. Back down one more time. Back down, flip it back. So you can just focus on your breath now. So let your feet open up, hands back and relax. Focus on slow controlled breaths into the belly. Breathe through the nose. So you can stay here as long as you want, decompress for as long as you want, get back into that nice relaxed state. <sighs> Otherwise, good job.